Alright everybody, what you're looking at are two access control systems. Both being about the same thing, they're standalone units, all in one. Not very secure, because let me show you. On the back of both of them, there's the relay, and all you have to do is if somebody were to easily pull this off, I have to just either connect or disconnect the two wires, depending on how you have your circuit set up. Same with this. So, not very secure. I mean, if you're at a place that's monitored by security a lot, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but if not, I mean, I would put this outside because anybody could just take a screwdriver and open it and it shows the circuits. So, yeah. What happens if you're afraid? Of, but that's for more standard users. What happens if you're more advanced like me? This is what happens if you're more advanced like me. Let's go ahead and we'll talk about it. Alright. So, here's the magnet, first off. It's mounted on a Z bracket, so I don't have to have it outside. Or it could be tampered with. And right here we have a... Um, request to exit sensor. This does not take place of the push to exit button, which I do have. Alright, and there's a door sensor. That is for a security system, and this is going to be the enunciator, and it will mount right there, as you can tell. There's a mounting plate. Alright, now, I'm sure you're curious to know what kind of access control system I do have, because this is not considered the system. This is just a reader, see? So yeah, it, it, it just reads this and then brings the data over to the computer. I mean, not the computer, the server, the network. This, that's right. And as you can tell, it has a network card on it. That is because it transmits data over network, and as you can see, there's a big wad of network cable I do have to shorten, but I haven't gotten to it yet, and I need to. And by the way, it's all connected to one big switch in my room. That's connected to a switch, that's connected to a switch right there, or the same switch, and that right there is connected to the same switch. And they all run up to my room because so I could control not only the access control system over it but I can also do remote desktop connection see like especially with this computer right here this is just a little thin client computer so you just enter the local IP address uh, I mean, it wasn't selected Well, it's not working right now. Why? Oh, man. There we go. See? And then you enter your credentials right into the username and password box, which I'm not going to do right now. That's for a different video. But anyways, so, yeah. As you can see... Here's the computer that controls it, and that is a invalid swipe. I'll get on to that. Yes, this is just really slow. Anyways, so yeah, there's my oh so lovely face. And it displays all the swipes for every door. There's This is a four door reader. As you can see, there's four relays. I have it mounted in that box right there. And I actually can view the last two entries right there see on that little television set because I have it connected um, to a display mo a dual monitor and there's a VGA ca cable going up to that TV set alright so here is the reader again I guess I'll show you the problem with this one see if you scan it right after it, it thinks it's wrong this is this thing's te idea of telling you if it's wrong that's right let me do that next to it. Okay, it's not working. Let me get a car that I know does not work. Let's see, grab a random car. We're going to be doing some programming in a second to add a um, new user. See, this is its idea of not right. 
See, it just blinks a lot. I don't think that's right, but I'm gonna have to do this. I don't know why I have to wiggle the mouse to do that, but as you can see, it has displayed a no privilege right there. All right, now I also want to show you something. Since this is a four-door reader, I do have another card reader outside. It's probably going to be for a magnet eventually. First off, there's my cat. We have two cats. Hi. That's our cat. She's really cute. Oh no. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why I cut down weeds, because look how tall that one is. I'm going to have to do that later. But anyways, this is a smaller reader, as you can see. It's perfect size for this. This one's a lot better than the other one, first off. Very loud. And also, it does not miss your, um, your re swipe like the other one I was talking about did, how if you swipe it fast enough after the first one, they'll consider it wrong. That one will not do it. And there's another sensor. That's eventually going to be for the security system as well. All right. So I guess we'll get to get some pro get to do some programming now. Now. Crap, where did I put my, um, key fob? Oh, as you can see, that was my key fob. As you can see, it was denied because I did not have it set up for that reader outside. This one, I don't think, is the one that is, yeah. Oh, actually, this is the temporary access one. We usually just leave right here until everybody gets their programmed cards. So how it just says, no picture available. All right, let's take a random key, and now we are going to do some programming. We could use this to, you know, but the thing is, those readers pick up diff a different number than these. So what I'm going to do is I have to go to access. Actually, no, we're gonna have to go to basic operate to where we can see the console monitor and then I'm gonna do is what I usually do is I take a key fob scan it here that should have monitored that see I have the door numbers set up to different names and here it is here's the card number so I'm going to copy this into my clipboard and then go to basic config personnel I'm going to click this add button and then now we're going to enter the name and the gate I'll put it John Smith right there and then we're going to add the card number that the reader picks up Oh, I'm going to have to go back and get it, or not, because I accidentally copied that. So exit, we're going to have to do this all over again. Let's take this back over to the reader. As you can see, when you exit out of that, that window automatically closes. There's the card number. So now we're going to go back to personnel, and since I didn't add it, I have to re-add it. John, not John Smith. Now we're going to paste this. Make sure I do it this time. There we go. 
And we're gonna technically add a photo even though I really don't have any. I'm just gonna use this no picture available one because I don't have a picture for John Smith because John Smith doesn't exist. And there's a bunch of, if you go to the tab others, oh, it asks a bunch of really personal questions. I like the nationality, religion, political, culture, social and insurance. So I guess it's supposed to be so social security, but it says social insurance number. I don't know. Alright. Let's okay that. And it's not ready yet because we actually have to go to um, access privilege and then add them. So change privileges. That's going to come with the screen, so we're going to see John Smith right here. And press this button. And how many doors do we want him to be able to open? Well, let's have him open all of them. Allow and upload. And there's a little progress bar right here saying how much it's, how fat, what it's uploaded. Or when it's done uploading. Here we go. Now we're going to go over to basic operate. And just upload, re-upload this to be sure. If I can select this. Upload. And we should get some figures yes see display more swipes so we're gonna get this in window again and I think our cat is down oh, yeah she's down here she wants to get in up oh, there she is anyways so um yeah, let's try this new card. Alright, it's locked now. Up. Ah. And let's see, yep, there we go. John Smith. Right there, if we can kind of see it. Alright, so about this right here I got a bucket of coins right here these will not work with quarters what my brother and I have decided would be a good idea would be get some coins like these and then like make some sort of like a one time use thing so just stick it in it's not hooked up now but it's like let's say you only come in here once get a coin, we give them a coin, and then they stick it in there, and then they should be good to get in. I guess now I'm going to delete this user, and it just empties into that bucket right there. Yeah, let's, let's just delete John Smith, because we don't need him in here anymore. So we're going to go to basic config again. Person now, highlight John Smith, and then press the delete button. All right, now he's gone. And let's just monitor all these again. So this should not recognize John Smith at all. Oh, I think I know why. Yeah, but it's reading that it's worked, but it just, it's not understanding what's the problem. It's like, it's saying it doesn't know the name. So it should work. Oh, there we go. See, it won't let you in. And the nice part about this is you can view this from any computer. I'm not sure if I actually have this set up on this remote desktop connection computer but we'll see so we are going to log in There we 
we go. There's a computer in my room that it's doing this to, see. There's the local IP. Yes, we do have the program. Now, unfortunately, we can't, like, edit any of the names on this computer because it's saved locally on that computer, so there's really nothing I can do about it, but this is what I can do. If the program will come up. And I do have to enter the password, which I'm not going to show you. Alright, so here's the same program. Now what we can do is monitor it. Alright, we don't need to do the other window. And take a key fob, and it should work. Ah, oh, that one's one that does not work. Let's just do this one. There we go. And see? I think the only reason why it shows up is because it's that's saved on this computer as well. That's the only reason why I'd see that it would work. Uh, I don't use the attendant, so I guess we can sign out of this. Are sure you want to exit? Yes. So yeah, I guess that just pretty much does it. Thank you very much for watching. And that will just about do it. Bye.